Welcome back. The ranking Republican on the House Intelligence Committee wants to get to the bottom of the Carter Page surveillance warrant. Congressman Devin Nunes sent a letter to FBI Director Christopher Wray and the U.S. Attorney reviewing the origins of the Russia investigation. John Durham requesting information about State Department records the Bureau received that undermines British spy... Christopher Steele's credibility. The FBI has until Friday to respond. I'm back now with Congressman Nunes to talk more about that letter he sent. Tell me about what specifically you are waiting on, Congressman, in terms of this letter that you sent to Christopher Wray on Friday. Well, we've learned in the last uh, month that there was information that the number two person in the European Affairs Department of the State Department, and if you recall, we've long been looking at the State Department looking for any information the State Department had on Christopher Steele or anything involved in this Russia hoax. So that information, we now, we now know that the government had that in 2016. So the State Department, in October of 2016, emails went to the FBI uh, saying things like that Christopher Steele was not believable, that he wanted to he wanted to uh, bring this out before the election. That should be a big red flag. Also said that, there, that this, the, this so-called Russia hoax, uh, the operation against Trump, or with Trump that Trump was a part of, was being run out of the Russian consulate in Miami. Well, it ends up, guess what? There is no Russian consulate in Miami. So this number two person at the State Department named Kavalek, she informed the FBI of these concerns. Now, why is that important? It's important for a number of reasons, but first and foremost, the FISA court should have had this. The FBI had it, the FISA court should have had it before they went and spied on the Trump campaign by getting a warrant on Carter Page. Another reason why this is important for the FBI is because the Congress, under the Republican control last time, asked for anything and everything on Christopher Steele. Clearly, if we would have had this two and a half years ago when we started this investigation, we would be in a much different place today than we are. Yeah. So, because this is clearly obstructing a congressional investigation. So someone at the FBI determined to hide this information, not provide it to the court, and what I'm concerned about is not provide it to the U.S. Congress. So they have till Friday to get it to us, and if they don't, we will make our ninth criminal referral. Uh, basically, we won't know exactly who at the FBI obstructed justice, but some Durham or the, the Department of Justice should be able to figure it out because there's emails that, that went around and somebody decided not to give it to the Congress. Yeah, we're, we're looking right now at the information that you requested from Director Ray, and you write uh, in the letter the date that the FBI was informed about the transmission of information uh, from Kathleen Kavalak, including but not limited to the information now known as the Steele dossier. So Ms. Kavalak was the number two person at the FBI at the State Department in Europe, and she basically raises her hand, raises a red flag about the Steele dossier. She does her due diligence. She, she says, look, this is uh, not trustworthy. Christopher Steele's work is not credible. And that memo from Kavalak is not shown to the FISA court. This is ex uh, exculpatory evidence that was not included in the FISA warrant. Y do you think that the FISA judge may have uh, reacted differently had he known that there were State Department people who were saying this information is not credible, uh, rather than just handing over a warrant to, uh, to wiretap on Carter Page? I think all Americans should be furious at this, right? So on one hand, we now know for sure that someone at the FBI kept this from the court. Number two, they also kept this from congressional investigators, meaning the Republicans that are, have been investigating this for two and a half years. And, and this is really important information. And you know, I think a lot of times Americans are just becoming tone deaf to this because it's just like one grenade after another. It's like, you know, how, ma how many times did we have to see this Russia hoax, how bad it was, and how, and how really what you, what you see, I think the only way to define this, Maria, is we have people that are possessed in this country that continue to perpetuate this Russia hoax, whether it's, whether it's ignoring important information like this uh, that, that Kavalek had, uh, whether it's continuing to say that, oh my gosh, you know, bring in Hope Hicks and pretend like something uh, really is wrong here, that, that, that Trump was colluding with Russians. I mean, there's no evidence of this, right? So w the only thing they had on Russians was, was the Steele dossier. 
right? And then Joseph Mifsud, who you've talked about on your show. Those are their Russians. But guess what? They're fake Russians. They're phony Russians. They're fusion Russians. They're Russians that only the Democrats knew about. And the Democrats were the ones that were colluding with Russians. You just can't make this up. So I don't know of a better term to use than you have the Democrats in this city, in Washington, D.C., the media, for the most part, 90% of them, are possessed individuals. Yeah. And the sad part about it is, is they have a responsibility. They are poisoning and have been poisoning the minds of Americans, millions of Americans, for two and a half years now. And the worst is, they're not stopping. Right. Right. They're not stopping. And that's the concern. No, they're, they're, you're right. I mean, the, now Hollywood's getting involved as well. You know, uh, uh, Robert De Niro's going absolutely lunatic on everybody w with this stuff, too. We, we've covered this a lot. Do you think, what does your gut tell you? Did they just make it up? I mean, did they just, they knew that Russia was trying to undermine the West for decades and they just inserted Donald Trump in there? To stop well, it? I think there's 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 it gets to the heart. Let me just get to the heart of, of what we have yet to answer that I hope the Department of Justice can answer under the U.S. Attorney out of Connecticut, and that is this: there were two parallel operations that were that were running at the same time that I believe started in late 2015, early 2016. One is the FBI was running an investigation into the Trump campaign. Not in July of 16, like they said. They're lying about that. It clearly started in 2015 or early 2016. At the same time, you had the, the, the Clinton campaign and the Democratic Party running an operation having their, their bag men, Fusion GPS. They're both running an investigation on a parallel track. The thing that we don't know that we need to get to the bottom of is when did those tracks become one and the same? When, you know, were there people that were working together with the FBI uh, and Fusion GPS and the Clinton campaign? We know they, we know at some point they knew about Christopher Steele. My guess is they, they knew this a lot early on in the, in the process, probably January, at least January, February, March yeah. of 2016. And so think about that. Hmm. It's Banana Republic stuff. It's, it's stuff that you only see uh, in countries that, that we would never want to live in, yeah. where the intelligence organization works with a political party and puts the other campaign under investigation for the very thing that they're doing. Yeah, unbelievable. It's so extraordinary, which is why I agree with you. Everybody on both sides of the aisle should be outraged by this. We'll take a short break. When we come back, I know you were in the Situation Room last week at the White House when top lawmakers received the briefing on Iran. Got to ask you about that as uh, new sanctions are going to go into effect tomorrow. And you're suing certain media companies. We'll talk about that. Plus, Congressman, on the national security threat of China. Hey, who are you? Oh, hey.